Uh, I just completed uh, a second edition of uh, my uh, textbook, uh, Delinquency and Juvenile Justice in America, uh, Waveland Press. Uh, and you can see it again on, on my website, just click under books. But uh, one of the chapters has to do with schools, the relation between schools, delinquency, and juvenile justice. Now, it's all, always been noted by researchers, I mean, for, for many years, that there's a close correlation between dropping out or falling behind in school or poor school performance and uh, delinquent uh, behavior. Uh, nowadays, it's, uh, it's got a different name to it, which is a, kind of a catchy name. Uh, and the uh, Children's Defense Fund calls it uh, the uh, Cradle to Prison Pipeline. Uh, you could also call it the School to Prison Pipeline. But anyway, uh, you can get on my website and click uh, on uh, Juvenile Justice, Delinquency and Juvenile Justice page and scroll about halfway down uh, to get a link on this. And there's also links to uh, studies concerning uh, the, you know, the, the, the dropping out of school and the consequences. Now one of the things that they point out in this particular study, the Children's Defense Fund, is that there are a lot of key variables that are involved in uh, predicting uh, whether or not a child is going to drop out of school or is going to fall behind and uh, some of the consequences of that. Now of course child poverty, uh, which is higher in this country than any other industrialized democracy. Let me repeat that. Child poverty uh, in this country is higher than uh, any other Western dem democracy, and that's uh, that's uh, horrible. Uh, that that should not be acceptable. And so, living in poverty places them at great risk of all sorts of things: poor health, poor nutrition, low birth weight, uh, single parent mothers, high unemployment rate. Uh, living in the inner city, and so on and so forth. So all of these variables uh, come together and strongly predict uh, whether or not a, a, a young person is going to fall behind in school, have difficulty keeping his, his or her grades up, and uh, getting suspended in school, getting expelled in school, uh, and then finally giving up and, and then just plain dropping out. And the consequences of that, of course, dropping out, uh, should be seen as a process, not an event. You don't just suddenly wake up on a Saturday morning in July or, or September or October or whatever and say, gee, I think I'll be a dropout. Uh, but one of the, it's, it's a long involved process. And, and, uh, but the consequences are, in some cases, literally deadly. Uh, I just th thought of something else, too, that there was a study that finds that uh, children who have dropped out and end up in the juvenile justice system are far more likely to die at a young age. They're more likely to be a victim of a homicide uh, than uh, kids who stay in school. But anyway, the process starts when they either get expelled or suspended or whatever. And the next thing that, that happens is that leads them right into the arms of street gangs because uh, that's where they get accepted. That's where they find support. Uh, and also, it, it drops them right into the arms of the juvenile justice system, so they end up in detention. And we know that, that that's not a nice place for kids to be. Uh, there's been studies, one study after another, uh, finds that the longer a kid remains in detention, the longer a kid uh, remains within the juvenile justice system, uh, the greater will be the likelihood that they will get into further trouble, that they will make matters worse, they'll become institutionalized, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they, there is, there's even a study uh, that uh, finds that there's a uh, Baltimore study, a, a link between truancy and, and street violence. The, the kids that are most likely to be truant are also involved in street violence. Uh, and then there's the, the study in California uh, from the University of uh, California at Santa Barbara, I believe, found that they, uh, there's 1.1 billion annually uh, in juvenile crime costs just for dropping out. Uh, and then another study finds that there's a high rate of imprisonment among dropouts. You know, surprise, surprise. Uh, but a lot of this, going back again to uh, the Children's Defense Fund, uh, there's a reason they call it cradle to prison pipeline, because by the time many of these kids get to be like five or six years old, they're already behind. They're already falling behind because of all the factors in their environment. And uh, as you might guess, I'm a strong believer of the nature, uh, the nurture part of the uh, debate between nature and nurture. Uh, these kids are, are, are nurtured into this kind of situation. They're born into it, uh, and uh, they, they face all sorts of disadvantages, not the least of which is there's a consequence of, of child abuse and neglect, running away, 
on all sorts of negative behaviors. So I think this is one of the things that everybody needs to take a look at and when we talk about uh, this connection between schools and uh, delinquency and juvenile justice.